calling 423-GET-FAME. That's 423-GET-FAME. I would tell you to leave a message, but the truth is, I don't really care. I've had this hotline open for months, and not one of you jokers have what it takes to be famous like me. So leave a message if you want, but don't expect a call back. I've got way more important things to do than to waste my time on losers like Mascarita Sagrada and you all. Thank you, and have a nice day. Hey there, folks, and welcome back to the Grave Consequences podcast, which is a part of the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Check out everything here on the Social Suplex Podcast Network. Search for that wherever you download your podcast. Give us a follow, rather. Um, You know, rate, review, follow, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Five stars is always appreciated. The recording date is... Saturday, November 13, 2021, just wee hours before, full gear. And um, because this drops on November 24th, I want to uh, I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving for what it's worth. Greg, I hope you enjoy your turkey the day this comes out, sir. I will enjoy my lonely box of mashed potatoes as tears drop into my glass for me to have something to drink. Oh, man. Yeah. Play some, uh, play some bullet for my Valentine. This is gonna be all emo, um, all day. Yep, some AFI, some <laughs> My Chemical Romance. There we go. Uh, a little bit of Blink One Eighty Two, O Three, and on. Dashboard um, Professionals, you know. All yeah, the... da- yeah, I love Dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, congratulations to the unofficial Major League Baseball team of the podcast, the Atlanta Braves, on being the 2021 World Series champion. This is our first recording after the glorious 4-2 to series win over the Astros has happened. I'm still a happy, happy little boy. And uh, Greg, today we're here to review Season 2, Episode 22 of Lucha Underground. The title of this episode is Fame and Fortune. And we're gonna we're gonna do our own little spin on the on the title, which we'll we get always, to. We, we always do. We for we have been pretty consistent with that. I think we've only kept one because it was like uh, like a, a, a episode named after the match type, and it was like a new match type, maybe. Yeah. Art was just better. It was actually like a really good title. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So the very first thing in this episode, we see Dario in his office. By the way, over these next two episodes that we recorded t- today. We are going to see a lot of Dario in his office as we continue to establish the card for Ultima Lucha Dos. But anyway, Dario is in his office. He's talking about the gift of the gods and the seven ancient Aztec medallions. And he says, you know, six people are going to have to compete for these, going to have to win these. But you, I'm giving you one, man. I like the I like the cut of your jib. He didn't quite say that. I like the cut of your jib. And you know what? I'm going to give this to you. And the luchador he's giving this to is a man by the name of Nightclaw. This man is like just all dark, looks like a demon or a gargoyle. And Nightclaw says, you know what? Like, I'm I'm taking the gift of the gods. I'm going to win that. I'm going to win the Lucha Underground Championship. And Dario points out, he says, you know what? Yeah, you're a part of the Jaguar tribe. But you know what happened to the Jaguar tribe? Their arrogance led to their downfall. And good luck. I mean, pretty good advice. A lot of the luchadors that have things happen to them are usually from either, you know, being an Icarus and flying too close to the sun or just believing they're untouchable or they're the best. Yeah. Speaking of Icarus, did you watch Eternals? No, you said it was mid. It just, it, 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 I'm an X-Men guy. So, like, anytime they push the Inhumans and, and the Externals, it, it, we just... <laughs> We 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 are just not infuriated, but it's like yeah, this yeah. will fail too because you don't. X Men took them out of bankruptcy. Yeah, or actually maybe it was after they went bankrupt, but X Men made them so much money, and the fact that they sold the Fox and they're just still being petty about it. Yep. You know, I'll stop. I'll, I'll, I I could rant about it forever, but fuck we the could. Animals. Which is funny because yes, they own the X Men, and they're just like ah well we'll we'll get to it. It's like come on, it's the X Men. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> but either way, uh, not, is Nightclaw an X-Men? That sounds like an X-Men name. Nightclaw is, I guarantee you there's a superhero in, in either DC or Marvel named Nightclaw from the mid, from in the nineties. There has to have been yeah. at least one. You would assume that sounds like a superhero's name. Oh yeah. It's edgy enough for the nineties. It's all black, probably, you know, out for vengeance, anti-hero. Uh, yeah. Probably looks the same. Yeah. But hey, we have our first Aztec medallion match of the night. And spoiler alert, all three matches tonight are for Aztec medallions, for what it's worth. This is our single, the singles match of the night. The other two will be different, have different amounts of competitors in them as well. But tonight we've got here Daga versus Mascarita Sagrada. And now this match is short. There's not a lot to take note of here other than Cobra Moon was watching the match from the top of Dario Cueto's office, and she seemed very um, excited. Yeah, she's uh, down bad for uh, Daga. Yeah, she's simping for sure. <laughs> <laughs> she signed up for his OnlyFans. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's great. great. Um, also, Masquerita is just, he's and he's fighting, man. But, like, he just can't keep up. And it's not like Daga was taking it easy on him. Like, yeah, he didn't hook the leg on a cover one time. But, like, Daga was trying throughout here, and he struggled a little bit, actually. Yeah, they, they give Mascarita his, his opportunities. But, like, yeah, he's, he's you know, he's happy. Well, he actually, Daga's not much bigger than him. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And I like Daga. I'm not, I'm not clowning on him. but He's just kind of short. Short like me. I'm short, too. Yeah. But yeah. it's just in compare, like you did Masquerita fight Cage 2 first? I believe so, yes. Yeah, I mean, like this was the one time that Masquerita could probably get like a pin off. Yeah. Uh, just because the size is good enough. Like it's kind of hard. Like if you're Daniel Bryan, who's great and maybe could even, well, I'm not even going to say that, but like Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Size matters to a point. And I'm a short guy. I can say, like, in a fight, that's that's yeah. why we have white classes, size, light, uh, rate, uh, we call it, uh, range, you know, uh, reach. Uh, yes. Weight distribution, leverage, that all matters in the fight. And Masquerita is always the underdog, always. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong, man. You're not wrong. And Masquerita put up a good fight, but, like, as soon as Daga got in that crossface lock on him, he was done. Yeah, as he should have been. Yeah. Daga needed a win, too. This was good for I, him. I agree, yeah. Good for Daga. Good for Daga. And, you know, we know the way the Famous B storyline is trending. Like, it's pretty obvious. Like, yes, you know, he he became his new client, but, like, he didn't really yield any success here. He's not a, he's not a Drew Rosenhaus. He's not a Scott Boris. He's whatever. He's Joe Every. <laughs> Like, he's not a good agent, that's for sure. He's the master P of NFL contracts. <laughs> I know you'll get that reference. That's like the one football thing I can <laughs> chime in with, but you remember that? Uh, vaguely. I'll he's notorious for having the worst contract ever made. I forget the, uh, was it a running back? But they got injured. Their whole contract was based around bonuses for, like, doing well, like getting yards, scoring touchdowns. Well, they got injured, so they got no it's money. Been, yeah. Ricky Williams. Oh, my God. Yeah, sorry. It's dated. I don't. <laughs> Anything I do with sports is going to be within no, that's fine. 30 years. <laughs> no, I remember Ricky Williams quite well. That man was like a legend. And like, he was good. He was a great player. And he went to, I mean, he went to Texas, which is like, a, a, what, like 10 hours away from here, Austin. But, um, yeah, yeah, very good, very good. But <laughs> I just... Oh, man, I just couldn't imagine having Master P be your agent. You know what I'm saying? No, it seemed it, it was clearly in hindsight. It was clearly mistaken. And, and just from interviews, uh, I mean, pe people have made assumptions that maybe he's a little he has some mental challenges. Master P. Yeah. Especially if you hear him talk in long interviews, like it doesn't sound like he's that smart. He's made yeah. a lot of money, but anyone can tell you that that works with rich people. You talk to, you don't have to be smart to be rich. Yeah, you, you don't. I, that doesn't shock me at all. But speaking, but of, I'm sorry. sorry I was just gonna say, you know, we're talking about bad agents here, 
And, you know, you kind of hit it on the head there with the Master P. Uh, <laughs> um, Famous B is now, like, just fed up. And, you know, Brenda picks him up. Brenda picks up Masquerita, and Famous B picks him up. But then he hits a thrust kick on him and just beats the crap out of him, beats him with his shoe. He's mad at him because Masquerita embarrassed him. It's like no one made you take on Masquerita as a client. Like, that, that was the choice that you made. Like you're over here in a temple full of full of warriors, man, that that are unrepresented and either you didn't go to them or they rejected you for some reason. Yeah, they then the announcers make a good they've been they've been doing a good job of Mm -hmm. mentioning that his records gotten worse. Yes. Since he he got um, famous B as a a manager. And I I don't it was it was actually kind of like an uncomfortable beatdown, which is good. Uh, yeah, it it was not something that was easy to watch because he was he was beating him with a shoe, which yes, you know I've never been beat by a shoe, but you just know uh, that that's you know you fucked up yeah. if you're yeah. getting beat by a shoe, exactly. and it got the crowd behind Masquerita, it got the crowd against Famous B mm-hmm. as a heel manager. It was yeah. well executed. Yes, I would agree, and with that. Our Aztec medallion match for Ultima Lucha Dos now has Nightclaw and Daga. Ooh. After that, Dario, we see Dario Cueto in his office, and he's in there with El Dragon Azteca Jr. And Azteca says, you know what? I know you think my brother killed your mentor, but he didn't. It was actually Black Lotus. And in this case, Dario's not actually lying. You, oh, you know what? You're right. I just realized that you're right. He's not yeah. lying. No, no, he's not because he, he already lied to Black Lotus to get her to kill Azteca. For I'm ah, I just man, I wish the Black Lotus character didn't exist, man. It's just not a good ah, her character is just so stupid. Yeah, she's she would be the character in Game of Thrones that you go to the bathroom when she comes on. Uh, she hasn't wrestled yet, still, two she's seasons. Going. She's going to once. <laughs> well, no, that this is where they establish like, hey, this is going to happen at Ultima Lucha. We're getting El Dragon Azteca and Black Lotus. Pardon me. El Dragon Azteca Jr. versus Black Lotus. But as I saw this segment, I thought to myself. That always sunny meme when Mac was like, I'm playing both sides. So I always come out on top. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. of. You know what? That's crazy. Uh, we're going to maybe title it. Oh, no, we can't use it for this episode. We already have a better episode name. Yeah. But uh, there's, uh, I guess, uh, not to get off topic, but or to segue is too much. But like, I think it's important to to note that. And we could be I could be wrong because I've been wrong before yeah. on rewatching. But I don't think there's a payoff for this. I think the payoff is the match at Ultima Lucha. Oh, think- yeah, there's no payoff. <laughs> yeah. I think that's it. Uh, with that, so hey, we established another match for Ultima Lucha Dos. Awesome. Yeah. With that, we have a trios match for three medallions. So win the match, get a medallion. Doesn't matter if you're involved in the pin or not. So we got a couple of odd trios here. Well, sort of. Uh, the first trio is Cortez Castro, Mr. Cisco, and their buddy Joey Ryan. Of course, two cops and a crook. Awesome. And then we have got strange bed, bedfellows for sure. Kill, kill shot, Sin, Siniestro de la Muerte, and Marty the Moth. Siniestro looked kind of badass coming out, though. For sure. For sure. That's and it, though. <laughs> if I'm Sinestro, I am still just so pissed at these guys. because, And I'm kind of pissed at Dario. And I get it like, you know, you've got the association with Mil Muertes and Katrina, so maybe, you know, you're not going to be treated the most favorably by Dario Cueto. But still, like, I'm pissed being put in this trio for sure because, like, Killshot, you know, and Marty the Moth with the Stolen Valor. By the way, for what it's worth, and I saw on Twitter this, you know, Wednesday before Veterans Day, uh, Shane Strickland was in the Army for what it's worth, so this is not a case of Stolen Valor. Oh, wow, he was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, it's a funny story, and he pulled it on the bump. Apparently, his mom was his recruiter, and she got she got him and his older sister enlisted. Wow. Yeah. 
Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Marty the Moth gets Chance of Culero, and I need to look that up because I, I've i looked it up before, but I cannot remember it. I'll do it right now while you're talking. Culero meaning, uh, oh, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yep i thought it'd be worse <laughs> yeah oh also as a uh show of good faith to kill shot marty the moth you know, gave his tags back to kill shot it's like okay well kill shot's gonna put him back on the uh, on the on the corner i almost said porner because i was trying to say corner and post at the same time it's all right bro we're all down bad yes i'm down bad uh <laughs> this match okay Again, I've been taking keynotes here, and I know you've kind of been doing the same. Hell, last recording, you didn't take any, if I'm not mistaken. I did. I did pretty good, too. I yeah, you did. I agree. I agree. Uh, one key spot that kind of, you know, stuck out to me for a laugh was Marty the Moth taking Joey's lollipop and offering it to Kill Shot. He offered it. Well, this is after the exchange where, you know, Joey Ryan comes out and the lollipop's in his in his shorts. Yeah, and then he puts it in his own mouth, and there's probably like a pouch, but it's intended that his lollipops has been banging around his nuts and and you yeah, pubes, pubes. So there's probably like a hair or two on that lollipop. I well, would assume. and he's putting his mouth. Well, Marty takes it from him and puts it in his own mouth, and they take they do a whole sequence where they're taking the lollipop and putting it in their own mouth. So it's uh-huh. you know it's one of those wrestling gross moments. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It was funny when Shane he offers it to Shane. Shane just smacks it out of his hand like no bro i'm not yeah taking that dick lollipop nope no lollipop for me and uh it's funny because the crew is like they've got marty the moth um where, right where they want him they're setting up for shatter machine and joey ryan cuts it off with a super kick to marty and it's like okay well you got offense in but like they had a rhythm going and all the while the crew is pissed at joey joey's pissed at the crew they're arguing with each other and Marty recovers and hits a curb stomp on Mr. Cisco. And then Killshot goes up top and takes up Mr. Cisco again. And with that, the odd trio gets the win. Killshot, Siniestro de la Muerte, and Marty the Moth. And after the match, Marty takes back the dog tags and runs off. Yeah, we saw that coming. And yeah. There was a, a few comments that the narrators, uh, the announcers made. Yeah. Uh, one was Vampiro going, hey, who would have known that Marty the Moth could fly? <laughs> Which kind of popped me. Uh, it's Black Friday now at JCPenney. Hurry and shop thousands of the merriest Black Friday deals while they last. Make spirits bright with up to 75% off fine jewelry. Get innovative with Sharper Image gifts now up to 50% off. Plus, take home kitchen appliances for $7.99 each after $10 mail-in rebate. Score these deals and more all week long before they're gone. Happy Black Friday, JCPenney. Offers valid on select items 1122 through 1128. Conditions and exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. Hello, this is Discover, and we take customer service very seriously. We know that if you have a question or concern about your credit card, that's a serious matter, and you need to talk to a real person about it. So we offer around-the-clock access to seriously talented representatives in the USA. Again, it's a serious endeavor. The only funny thing about it is Bob. If you call us and Bob answers, you're in for a treat. Get 100% U.S.-based customer service and talk to a real person day or night. Discover exceptionally common sense uh and then striker said yeah you know uh moths are great creatures they they turn they uh, proof of evolution because they turn into butterflies which what yeah i think i he basically just said it wrong but he was trying to i think say about like from a, a larva to a moth because i googled it because i was like are they the same thing and they're in the same species but they're a different version of that species, like because moths have their wings down by their side, whereas butterflies always have their wings up and out. And there's other other differences, but uh, I was like, wow, that's he was just wrong. But he was trying to like just add some you know flavor and some poetry to to the fight, uh, and it just didn't come out right. But that that's going to be the title: is moths don't turn into butterflies. <laughs> yeah, Matt Stryker. Former school teacher, for what it's worth. Yeah, he probably taught, like, math. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, to be fair, I don't think he was a science teacher. Um, <laughs> but whatever. 
Um, <laughs> after and that, we're clearly picking on him. Like we we yeah. we know he didn't mean that, but it's just yeah, a funny so, thing he said. By the way, it's funny. Last time we recorded, you had said, you know, you have pretty much tuned out the announcers. I'm kind of at the same point right now. I'm not going to lie. Well, yeah, because after a while, Vampiro and I, we pick on them a lot, but yes, yeah. they're they can be a highlight of a match where mm-hmm. sometimes I've clearly gotten distracted and I'm just listing all the, the dumb things they say because they pop me. They're funny. Yeah. But Vampiro is not really a great announcer because he has trouble talking about things that aren't about him. him. Yeah. Uh, and Stryker is sometimes left hanging. Stryker yeah. tries really hard. Like, we're very critical of him, but it yeah. is clear he cares and he's doing yeah. his absolute best. And you, mm-hmm. He may not be your, your cup of tea. He's not really mine. I like a lot of stuff he does, but... Uh, he's not my favorite announcer, uh, but Vampiro really sometimes there's even if you are paying attention to them, sometimes there's awkward moments, especially when they start to show off and Stryker's yeah. going down and he's and Vampiro is just moving around like, you know, gesturing and, you know, trying to be like. Like, you know, the show and it's just, yeah, I don't know. You know, they, I hate to admit it. But like they made up and I get it, you know, they wanted to use him on screen more so than anything. And then after they killed him off, I guess it wasn't really an option. But like Conan would have probably been a better color guy than Vampiro. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I think you would still have that stuff where the younger generation has a problem with what the older generation says, not to a Booker T level or a disco yeah. or even a even a Bubba Ray level. But he would say some things that people are just don't understand. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, I won't get into the Keith Lee thing uh, that Booker T said, but stuff like that. He wouldn't have been that bad, but yeah. he he would have, he definitely. Conan's a very good talker. I think yeah. he'd do well. I think you're absolutely right in that he'd be a good announcer. I definitely think yeah. he could do it. Yes. Um. Well, yeah. With that, Marty the Moth, Killshot, and Siniestro de la Muerte join Daga and Nightclaw in the Gift of the Gods match at Ultima Lucha Dos. So we've got five. Yeah, five of the seven. So now, you know, if you can do basic math with one more match coming up, you could guess that yes, this was an eight-person tag. No, I'm kidding. Uh, this was a tag match, and we've got a strange bedfellows thing going on here again. Just further proof Dario Cueto is kind of a dick. We have got the two combatants of the first ever no moss match in Ultima at in Lucha Underground history. We've got Sexy Star and Mar- the Mariposa versus Taya and Eva Lise, who they've got plenty of beef. You know, going back to Johnny tagging with Eve in Son of Havoc, and, you know, Taya jumping her after the match. Greg, you okay there, buddy? I'm good. Okay, nice. Um, the story of this match was miscommunication. Uh, did we already cover the Cuerno versus Mill? Uh, that's not here. Oh my god, I'm looking at the wrong notes. Okay, <laughs> I'm looking at the next show, I'm like, wait, do we skip a beat? I'm you sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, the, the story of this main event here was just miscommunication and a shit ton of it. And uh, the the team of Sexy Star and the Mariposa get the win, and they actually get the win after Sexy Star is thrown on Ivelisse by the Mariposa. The well, Mariposa, what'd she do? She did like a uh, fire uh, Death Valley driver to Ivelisse? Because she got her because uh, uh, the ref was distracted. Yeah. So it would have still been legal, I think. Yeah. Uh, but like she fucking dropped <laughs> Ivelisse. I mean, I'm going to be honest, like Ivelisse is the worst one in this four way yeah of the four and by the way this has to be the most uh women to be in a women only match in lucha underground at least so far i think it's the first time they've had four women <laughs> yeah you're probably right you're probably that right that i was gonna say the only i guess well katrina has not really stepped in the ring but like black lotus but that's it and she hasn't stepped in the ring either but yeah, of the four active women on the roster, they're all four in this match, and it was fine. It was inoffensive. I didn't have a lot of notes because the story got kind of repetitive. Yeah, and I don't want it to seem like we're picking on Eva but like 
this is our second watch through and it's just more evident that she's not the best woman on the on that roster well and it doesn't help that like she was probably at least hobbled throughout like most of the run you're right it doesn't help yeah uh and i don't like her character yeah she's not a she's not an inherently likable character she hasn't been from like day one um, but they're pushing her i, I never understand because that type of character is never well received the abrasive just confrontational well it's angry woman (laughs) here's the thing you had hope for it in season one you know when they were you know when she was one third of the trio's champions you're like okay maybe they're evolving her character and then it's like nope like it it stops here like this is as much depth as you're getting no because she's not showing any other side besides i'm always going to be yeah you can be in Austin, but like you better whoop some ass for me exactly. to like you. Like that's why people liked Austin. Like he was he wasn't nice to people. He was no. abrasive and confrontational. But he would show up and stomp a mud. That, that's where like, you know people started talking about stomping a mud shawl, like uh, uh, a mud hole in people. Like yeah. I miss some of the '90s brawling from wrestling, yeah. just whooping ass and like Eva Lee. That's her whole gimmick. But like she can't even do that. She's not whooping she, Taya's ass. You know she's I not was whooping. Say, yeah. She's always working from underneath. Yeah, and it's just like that's only so interesting to me. Like I don't try and think of uh, another wrestler that's like that that I don't care for, but yeah. I can't think of one at the moment. But it's just for me, it's just like okay, so she's not the baddest bitch in the in the ring. Nope. <laughs> so is she a heel? Like if she were a heel, that's the thing. If she were a heel, this would be a perfect gimmick. Yep. She is completely miscast as, as a face. Mm-hmm. I would agree. I would agree. And now with the win, we have got the seven luchadors uh, confirmed for the Gift of the Gods match at Ultima Lucha Dos. Those are, in reverse order, we have got Sexy Star, Mariposa, Marty the Moth, Siniestro de la Muerte, Killshot, Daga, and the debutante, Nightclaw. So we've seen six of these uh, luchadors in action, and we're going to see the debut of Nightclaw. I am... I'm interested. I mean, it's a seven way. It could get a little clusterfucky, but, you know, we got to hope, you know, they'll just keep it together. Yeah, large people matches tends to work better in, in Lucha than anything else, usually. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. not a, a worry. And for me, it's going to be the I don't remember Nightclaw at all. So it's going to be my first time watching them. So it'll be a, <laughs> a new experience for me. It's funny because I didn't either. I was like, oh, like who the, I was like, who the fuck is this wearing all black? <laughs> looking like a gargoyle. Like, what, what? What's the Nightclaw? Yeah, he's oh man. But we we do have one more segment here. We've got uh, Prince Puma. Prince Puma speaks to the believers, and I thought this was going to be another Mil Muertes situation where Prince Puma grabs a microphone and as soon as he tries to talk, so and so comes out. Well, not quite. Prince Puma actually speaks, and you know it's funny because you know they say from Boyle Heights, Prince Puma, and it's you know they uh try to make him i don't know i always assume like the prince puma character is mexican i hope that's not racist of me to assume but it's funny because ricochet is a half black half caucasian man from paducah kentucky and he sounds exactly like that when he speaks yeah it's it's one of those things that we're more uh we notice it more often now in, yeah you know it's gonna be 2022 pretty soon yeah back then it was more well i don't want to say okay but it happened more often uh and the interesting th- thing to me is that puma his goal in there was to build up interest in their match yeah and i think he succeeded like yeah, he i because i don't you know me and you we were, we were just talking before the show started wrestling isn't our number one hobby uh, spoilers yeah. uh it's not it's... not not these days not these days but like i love like this is a great you know great um time for me is watching these shows and recording these podcasts that's why i still do it because quite frankly if i lost the passion i wouldn't be doing it right now yeah it's it's uh, and i get the itch every once in a while to write like a column or do this and do that yeah but like um because of the the how bad the internet is for you know your Many mental are. health yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't always want to contribute but the, the thing i'm getting at is that 
Puma, his goal was to go out there and generate interest. And he did a passionate speech. Yep. And he's he's coming off as a little bit as a heel, but he wants to yeah. challenge Rey Mysterio. And mm-hmm. he makes you feel the... And we were talking about this earlier, too. Like, the real type of, like, competition. The real kind of fight. Like, I want to prove I can beat you. And, like, just, like, in your face, like... You know, you you felt it. It felt genuine. And yeah, I don't know how often he gets to talk in WWE. This isn't going to turn into me uh, shitting on WWE because I don't watch. I genuinely don't know. Yeah, uh, I think no, he can. It's... One of the criticisms you, I always heard about Puma is he can't talk, and I don't know if I agree with that. I think he can. Yeah, exactly. Well, no, he uh, he had a short promo on SmackDown last night actually, and uh, it was you know fine. It, you know, it wasn't really like a. You know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't offensive. So I, I don't know. It was just more like he was advancing a plot point. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? And, and as much as the WWE is scripted promos, which people criticize, and I have a problem with yeah. too, Me if too. that was what he was supposed to do and he did it, he succeeded, yeah. especially even from like, you know, WWE side. If he goes out there and he advances the story, generates interest, that's all they, That's all he needs to do. Yeah. No, you're you are absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, but yeah, he, you know, he's like, you know, you know, people told me I could be the next Rey Mysterio. And at this point I want to find out if I'm better. So Rey Mysterio, accept my challenge. Rey comes out to the ring to face Prince Puma. And, you know, he's just like, Puma, you're, 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 you're good. You're damn good. But you are still a prince and I am El Rey. But I want to know if I'm still the best. I accept your challenge. So, <laughs> my man, Ultima Lucha Dos just found its main event, Prince Puma versus Rey Mysterio. And you know the emphasis of Rey, why that's important, right? Yeah, it means king. Yep. I didn't know that until I was looking up, you know, names for, for uh, a read. Like, I was looking up translations, and I was like, oh, Rey means king. And then, then I saw this promo. I was like, oh, so he's King Mysterio. Yep, exactly. They never tell you that. They should. They should. Like, he should have won King of the Ring. Spanish is, people don't know this. I don't know if this has changed, but I remember growing up in, in uh, school. And, uh, you know, people were like, oh, you come to our country, you speak English. Well, when I was in school, billions of years ago, uh, yeah. it was always said that Spanish was America's second language. Mm-hmm. And I think people... I don't know why that's never brought up in those kind of arguments because it is. Uh, but it, it's kind of weird that no promotion, because I'm not shitting on WWE because Lucha didn't really do it. You kind of could tell from this promo, but I didn't notice until you know the second time watching it. It should be emphasized that he's a king. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Seems like a missed opportunity for stories. It really is, man. It really is. But hey, that is our show. And we're going to grade this. And boy, I tell you what, I'm giving this a B. And the only reason I'm not giving a B minus is because of that promo at the end. You know, that building up that anticipation of Prince Puma and Rey Mysterio. And we knew, you know, from the finish of that, you know, 12 person tag, it was going to get here. But it's like, what are they going to do in the meantime? And, you know, we get this impassioned promo from Prince Puma, who, to this point, had never spoke on the show before. And we get an equally passionate Rey Mysterio, and it sets up our main event for Ultima Lucha Dos. Whether or not it goes on last, it doesn't matter. Like, that's the main event, dude. And I I wish, if I could just grade this segment, I could give it a B, but I I have to get the episode a C, just because it's, you know. Yeah, it's not... There's not a lot of meat on the bone. This was just here to quickly establish and hot shot <laughs> seven contenders for the gift of the gods. Yeah, it's basically the exposition episode, and that's fine. You need it. It's fine. Yeah. It, it wasn't like it wasn't hard for me to sit through. Uh, as we've mentioned, like, you know, uh, we have other interests. And frankly, sometimes sitting like we usually watch two episodes in a row yeah. so that we can review two. Uh, sometimes it is hard. Even if it's a great episode, but, uh, yeah, you know, this wasn't terrible. It's just, yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, the next one, the December, uh, first episode, the one the week after Thanksgiving, Mm -hmm. 
or pardon me, yeah, December 2nd. Um, but that episode, I'm very excited for. <laughs> well, I, did I give my grade for this? You did. You gave it a C, pal. Okay, cool. That, that's it. <laughs> that was Benoit brain. Uh, <laughs> I'm never getting rid of that Bowflex, dude. I don't care what you say. Oh, my gosh. Uh, thank you all for listening. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> by the way, check me out every Wednesday night on Eddie and Caleb's Zero Cast right after AEW Dynamite, hero-based movie reviews, great stuff. Thank you for listening once again. God bless you. Have a very happy Thanksgiving. Or, you know, maybe if you, maybe you're listening to this months down the road. Maybe it's Valentine's Day. Have a good Valentine's Day, too, man. You know, get your DS. Do something. Uh, be careful when you're driving Thanksgiving though get a DD call Uber yep or you could have grave consequences <laughs>